great about that, other than trying to help people who are Welcome back to The Immigration Show. It's your boy, Jim Hacking. This is episode number 512 of The Immigration Answer Show. I'll be here for the next hour trying to answer as many of your immigration law-related questions as I can. How is everybody doing? Let me know what's going on. Let me know how things are in your neck of the woods. I'm glad to be here. I'm he glad to be here with you. I hope you have a fun show. It's nine degrees in North Dakota. Jay Cruz lets us know. It's going to be minus 35 this weekend. The frozen chosen are in the house. Yikes. That's too damn cold. That is too damn cold. I, I used to like the cold. Now I don't like the cold so much. But that, I think we can all agree, it's too damn cold. All right, all right. I think Huli's on a call. The brothers and sisters are waiting for the link. Let me see if I can help out. Um, I'll just put the raw link in there. You guys all know what to do. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from, and we'll go ahead and get started with Deborah. Hello, Deborah. Hi. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I'll just jump right into it. Uh, 2018 uh, filed for fiance visa. Uh, we were denied. 2019 because he said he didn't believe our relationship was real which consulate uh, in Addis Ababa Ethiopia okay um I sought legal advice we decided I went over there November of that year and we married and then I um, hired a lawyer and we filed December of 2019 for I-130 okay uh, Four years have gone by. We just January 1st got our interview letter for um, February 5th. Our nice. lawyer is demanding more money, so we're back to being on our own. So in this process of getting our interview packet together and talking about the interview process, uh, we've come across some questions, which is why I'm here. Um, what, just real quick, what, is the, what does the lawyer want more money for? um to put together a packet and help us with our interview that wasn't part of the original contract no sir so i'll deal with him later okay, <laughs> right go ahead. now yeah, yeah. My priorities my husband i like the way um, you said that i'll deal with him yeah later. Okay. right um the first thing that has come up was my husband realized immediately his passport will expire may 23rd so he went january 3rd and applied um for a new passport we've been advised it takes anywhere from three to eight months right now mm -hmm. uh, he does have the the application um showing that he's applied for the new passport okay will that affect his interview i don't think it'll affect his interview they might they might they might want to work on it faster they might want to work on it slower i think it might affect what whether and when he gets his visa i don't think it'll affect the interview okay. and, and I, I wouldn't i wouldn't go running in there bringing it up i would wait to see if it comes up and if it comes sure. up then i would say oh yes my friend i'm well aware of that here's my receipt for my application for a new passport okay Fantastic. That's what we were hoping to hear. Um, the other thing is when he did his other interview, um, he said that sometimes he speaks very English very well, but sometimes um, he didn't understand the question. So um, he said that the um, the man was very irritated when he asked him, telling him he didn't understand. So he's wondering if he should get a translator this time, even though he speaks English well. I don't think they'll let a translator in there. Oh, okay. They said I, mean, I, don't, think, I don't think I don't think he can bring one. I think he can use like he can ask to be interviewed in his native language, but I don't think he right. can bring a translator. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's correct. That's what he was saying when he 
uh, went into the building last time they asked him which language he preferred. Well, has his, has his English improved over the last four years? Yes. I don't know. I think it's a crapshoot. You know, it's like trying to pick lawyers or pick offices or pick um, service centers. You just never know who you're going to get. So he might get the crabbiest person that's fluent in his language, or he might get the nicest American. You just never know. Okay. Okay. Um, photos. Um, should we only bring photos to the interview that have not already been submitted online? I'd say yes. Okay. Um, one last question. Sure. Uh, should I find a lawyer to a go over our packet before I send it over to my husband? Cause I'm going to be putting it together. Mm. I don't know. It depends. How thorough do you think you are? I mean, I think that I can be thorough. I just want to make sure it all looks good and, yeah, I mean, most lawyers, any lawyer worth their salt wouldn't do that for you because they're taking on the liability of saying, yeah, this is good. And then if it gets denied and they, and you okay. know, like, I, I wouldn't do that. But um, do, I don't do think people you, usually put them in like file folders or binders or what's easiest? So I think the best thing are accordion, accordion folders if he has okay. one and then just have them tabbed so he can get to the, the key is to be able to get to stuff quickly. And the other key is, don't pull shit out until somebody asks for it. Got it. Okay. Um, have you ever heard of Argo? They help. They're like, they were um, officers doing interviews. They used to have that job. So they put together a group and you can mm -hmm. hire them to help you pre-interview. I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be against that. Okay. Okay. That's all I needed. I really Hi, Deborah. Good luck. Let us know how it goes. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. See ya. Oh, I hope that, I mean, they've been waiting a long time. If the I-130 is four years old and they did the fiance case before that. Um, David says he's got me on a 50 inch screen. So let me just say, hello, David. How about that? You can see me in HD. How about that? All right, all right. And then I saw another comment. Uh, Kadesia is watching from Atlanta. That's fun. Laura's holding forth as she often does about the election. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm not going to get too worked up over it today. Um, oh, yeah. There it is. Where is it? There's a nice comment. Here it is. That's the one I was looking for. From the Kurdish Cooking Channel. Well, first of all, please put a link to the Kurdish Cooking Channel because, you know, uh, my daughter just took AP Human Geo. In fact, she had her exam, I think, today. And we were talking about displaced people or stateless people. And she said, the Kurds. And we were all, everybody sort of stopped and said, wait a minute. Nor knows about the Kurds. Holy cow. Stop the presses. Nor knows about the Kurds. We were very excited about that. So um, if you want to put the link to the Kurdish cooking channel, we'd love to share it in the comments. That would be great. But more importantly, congratulations on the visa. Um, when is she coming? Hopefully soon. Very excited for you. I'm glad that we were able to help if we did. That's great, great news. So thank you, Kurdish Cooking Channel, for keeping us posted. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oops. All right. Alejandra's back. What's up, Alejandra? Hi, Jim. How are you doing? Well, how are you? I'm okay. Just a stressful day, but it's another day. That's all that's right. Often so true. question about my case in a specific. So um, a hypothetical, a hypothetical case, you mean? All right. <laughs> so, um, you know, the the war permit will expire in um, September, right? Uh -huh. So, but I don't even get the the new war card related to the new case that is already going to be seven months. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Will be maybe just insane to re reapply for the work card that is attached to the old case because of course they don't gonna uh, renew that one yeah so, I think you're just waiting on the new one i think this hypothetical person is waiting on the new one um so it's anyway i don't know um you think that by then on september i this hypothetical person will just get the green card i hope so <laughs> I, I hope so yeah i hope so because you know, in April will be like 
five years of being married and I'm just getting tired of it. Just right. waiting. No, we just got to keep chilling, Alejandra. God. All right. Okay. All right. That was all. Thank you. And remember, you can always email me. If you want to talk to me about your case, just email me. Oh, okay. I will. You don't have to come on here. All right. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, Jamal's in the comments. What the heck? Is he back? Is Jamal back from Nigeria? Let's sure hope so. Let's hear how it went. I don't know. Did he go yet? Diahito's back. Boy, we got a lot of old time visitors here. What's up, Diahito? Hey, Jim. How you doing? I'm great, buddy. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, about, about my case, um, I got um, a few more questions. Uh, um, I had a, a couple of uh, violations, traffic violations. So um, I just found out um, like two, three days ago, I found out that I, I didn't pay one fine in, the, in 2019. So I counted the, uh, you know, the um, DMB in New York, where, yeah. I used to live, where I used to live. So they say you got one unpaid ticket at this time, and it's uh, one for uh, uh, to fail the stop sign. So I told them that uh, what was the what was the fine? They say you got to pay two two hundred thirty three dollars, and then you should be fine because. Uh, you didn't went to, you didn't appear to court. Apparently, you live out of the state right now, so just pay the fine. So yesterday, I paid the fine. Well, hold on, hold on. Did you ask them if there's a warrant out for your arrest or no? No, I didn't be in arrest. I just, uh, I just, the police just uh, stopped me and then gave me a ticket. No, no, that wasn't my question. My question is, did you? So when you miss a court date, sometimes the judge says. We need a warrant out for Dieto, so if he gets pulled over, to arrest him later. Did, did you got to ask him if there's a warrant out for you? Uh, they didn't ask about that. They just said you just got to pay the fine and you'll be okay. That's all they tell me by the okay, by, but, by phone. Okay, but yeah. I want you to call. I want you to call them back and say, "Is there a warrant out for my arrest?" Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I will. I will do that. But okay. uh, I paid the fine yesterday, and then I print out uh, like a, you know, like a copy of that. So I got all that, and then uh, they told me if you want to. I got a couple uh, more tickets, like three more tickets in the past, just uh, being for uh, parking tickets, and uh, uh, all all of all of them said you is paid already. So, so uh, I request a copy of all the all that the four tickets that I have in New York, and uh, they told me that they're gonna take like two three business days to get that copy, and uh, so my question is uh, so. I got to bring that copy of that and in my interview in the interview day um, besides the other the, the other two the other two uh, arrests that I got this is for naturalization yeah for yeah you should bring you should bring them are any of them in the last 5 years um uh, no the other the other was in uh, 2014 and 16 the last one the yeah. The fine that I didn't pay was in 2019. Okay, so you're going to need to bring all those, but only only answer their question. So if they said, do you have any in the last five years, tell them. And then show them proof of 2019. And then if they ask, do you have any others, then tell them about 2014 and 2016. Okay, yeah, I request a copy of uh, all the fines. They say we can we can send you all the, the fines. Yeah, I know, I know. But I'm saying don't just throw it all out when you walk into your immigration interview. Wait to be asked for them. Oh, okay, just just if, if they ask me. But the 2019 one, you got to give them that one because you forgot that one. So you got to tell them about 2019. But don't be throwing everything down until they ask. Oh, okay, okay, I'm gonna do that. And um, my other question is, um, and one of the uh, the um certificates that uh that I got for the arrest in 2012, um, the uh, the one that says that I, I got a. Uh, um, arrestment. So that was filed two charges in, in one. I didn't know that. I just, I just, I just checked, and uh, yeah, I saw that arrestment. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you what know. happened to it? What happened to it? I had a fight with my brother, a physical fight. But what happened to the harassment charge? Is what I mean. Yeah, I don't know what the, what it says arrestment charge. Um, well, you got to find it. You got to find out what happened. Yeah, because and both are in the same, in the same 
they got that I got in 2012. So when's your interview? Um, no, I, I didn't file yet. Um, I'm about to file. You told me to uh, file at the end of uh, of this month. So I'm about to send all that. I'm I'm filing online already, and uh, I'm putting every, I, I got almost everything ready, but. Uh, I just want to make sure, um, you know, because they asking, they say if you got extra evidence, that you can submit it in the online form. All right, cool. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I was wondering if you can um, give me your email. I, w I want you to email you and see if you can take a look of, of those two dispositions that I have and see. Um, give me your opinion and see what, what, what you see on it. Yeah, may, yeah, I'll, I might do that. Yeah, email is the email's info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com, okay? All right, all right. That's all, Gene. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, buddy. Oh, Pineapple Lemon's in the house. Now we can get started. Now we can get started. Pineapple's here. Samir is here. Hello, Samir. Yeah, how are you, Hacking? Great. How are you doing? Good. Um, I'm new here. I watched your shows, and you're really good, I, I think. Thanks. Okay, I am from Ethiopia. I think I'm just gonna go straight into my question, right? That sounds good. Okay, I am from Ethiopia and I applied for the I-589 form. I filled the form online. And then and I realized- you're in, And you're inside the United States. Yeah, I am inside the United States. And my I, just wife wanted to make, I just wanna make sure because it said Samir yeah. in Dubai, so- okay. Yeah, I was in Dubai, that's why. <laughs> so, yeah, and then uh, I made a small tiny bit mistake, like I my, like entry date was November 28, but I wrote November 27. Oh, that's but, right. But I have my, I've like, uh, I have like my I-94 yeah. uh, record number there, but I'm scared of one thing. You know, I understand it's a small thing. I could just explain it to the interviewer. I understand that. But the problem is when I apply for employment authorization or if I'm eligible for TPS in the future, I want to know, would they cross check and say, hey, you wrote 27 here and it's 28 here what are you doing type of thing no no they're they're pain in the ass but not not for something like that they understand that people make typos and the whole purpose <clears throat> the whole purpose of the one of the reasons they do the asylum interview you'll see when you whenever you get it they'll have a red pen mm -hmm. and they'll go through and correct everything and then they'll say okay samir i made 17 changes can you can we go over all of them so don't don't worry about this. So a day is not a problem. So when the employment authorization or I'm going to be eligible for TPS in a while, hopefully, yeah. inshallah. So so it's gonna be a bit different for the form, you know. One is gonna say my last entry date is November 28th, and one is gonna say 27. Do they do they cross check or do they send like annoyed or something? No. Nah. No, nah, you you don't think so? So I should just leave it. Well, like I said, you'll correct it at your asylum interview. Okay. And, okay. And, and there's no real other way to correct it until then. Yeah, because I sent email and they said we can't correct it. And I called the USI service center. They say we can't correct it. I don't know who yeah. corrects it, you know. You're good. So, okay. Thank you, brother. That's, that's it. it. Yeah, that's nice it. Nice to Good luck, buddy. Okay. Bro. See you, man. Aqueous Spaces is here. At least the roof hello, of his car hello. is here. Are you driving? Hi. Oh, we can't talk if you're driving. Yes, I'm driving, driving at the moment. All right, I'll come back later. Let me know when you're not driving. Rumi's here. Hello, Rumi. You're on mute. Camera. Can we can we switch off the camera? The camera is off. Okay. Thank you very much. Of course. Uh, amazing work you have been doing. Straight to the question. I'm here in the U.S. I came on a B1, transferred to an F1 transferred to a R1, uh, applied 360, approved, got EADs and travel permits. Uh, I have wife and two sons. And in between, just before my R1, we had applied for asylum too. That's a which lot. Is still pending. Sounds like a law school exam question. Okay. So uh, I was the one who had applied for the uh asylum and my wife and children were the dependents so my wife hasn't been home since last 10 12 years so she wanted to go home with the travel permit is it the same country yes uh i think that's a bad idea okay she's 
She's she was not the primary applicant on the asylum application. I know. Okay. If you're asking me to give you my blessing, I'm not going to do that. I think it's a bad idea. Okay. I'm, thank you. That, take, take a different country to visit. Take a different country to visit the parents and family. Yep. Okay. So since my I-360 is pending, my wife and children, they got their travel permits, but I did not get... 485 pending. My 485 is pending. Right. No, I know. That's why that's why you have the work card and the and they got the travel docs because the forty fives are pending. Uh, I did not get a travel permit at all. That's all right. If you have an asylum case pending, none of you should leave. Okay. So, so the second follow up question is: If I withdraw my asylum, what happens then? You have sworn under oath that if you go back to your home country, something bad is going to happen to you. Okay. That you're going to get tortured or killed or persecuted because of some characteristic about yourself that you shouldn't have to change. Okay. So if all of a sudden you get a green card based on an R1 or, you know, being a religious leader, and all of a sudden, oh, now it's suddenly safe for me to go back to my home country, I think that causes problems. But uh, the reason we had... So even if I withdraw now before getting the green card, it is not okay. So when you applied for asylum, you rang a bell. That right. bell can't be unrung. You swore under oath. You signed a form. Right. And just, just because you withdraw it doesn't mean you didn't swear under oath. Right. Now, what I thought you were going to say is if there's been some change in circumstances in the home country to which you're no longer fearful. Yeah. There have been changes. There have been changes. Is that some? Is that something the whole world would agree on, or something that you say? No, no, no. It is the whole world would agree on. Okay. At least to my state, where I belong to. Well, no, that's a country. It's a country. The, 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 there was. Here, here's what I'll say. If you're having the argument that it was safe for you to go back, things change. If you're having that argument, you've probably already lost. So, okay. You guys can do whatever you want. Right. But if you're asking me from an immigration standpoint, uh -huh. does it make sense for us to go back to the home country at any point before we get our citizenship? The answer to that question is no. Okay. Okay. It's, it, irrespective of we withdrawing now, then it doesn't change at all. See, now you're not listening. I'm, I got it. No, you're not listening. You just said if we withdraw it now, what did I say about withdrawing? Right, right, right. You can't undo that ring, that bell you rung. That's why people okay. shouldn't file asylum cases if they think there's some chance they want to go back later. Okay. All right? Okay. All right, thanks, Rumi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye, buddy. Everyone's asking why I didn't lose my temper. I was just at my therapist before this. That's why. I'm chill. That's right, Tony. Tony's mad because I'm not cussing enough. Jawan is here. Hello, Jawan. Hi, Jim. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Thanks for coming on the Good. show. Good. Is it is it possible for me to turn off my camera? I'm so sorry. Of course. No, it's fine. Thank you that's so how, much. Um, that's how we do. It's up to you. So, <laughs> are we asking hypothetical questions, or are we just it's, getting it's straight down to business? I mean, when people put their name down on the in the in the chat or you know on screen, I think it's good to say. I've got this friend or my buddy over here, or I know I heard about, there's always the magical person in California too. So, but it's all good. If it's, <laughs> if it's a straightforward thing, you know, Okay. if you're going to, if um, you're going to apply for asylum and then say it's safe to go back because I got my green card some other way, then you probably <laughs> want to talk hypothetically. Um. So um, we'll, we'll speak hypothetically. Sounds good. My friend filed a I-130 petition for her husband in Iraq. Okay. Well, Kurdistan, let's be more specific. Kurdistan. Great. But you know, Kurdistan is not a country, so we say Iraq. Even Noor knows that. My daughter Noor knows that <laughs> Kurdistan is not a country. She took AP Human Geo. We're very proud of her. Go ahead. Um, filed the petition back in June of 2021. Her husband finally got an interview in Ankara, Turkey. Yeah. Um, on the 5th of January, I believe. Okay. 
so, so not too long ago, like five days so ago. Five days ago, yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, passed the interview process, but got to the part where they had to show documentations. And uh, they asked for a I-864A form from the joint sponsor. Assholes. Okay. And hadn't that, already, my hadn't, that question, already been, hadn't that already been submitted? No, they didn't. Okay. But prior to his interview, uh, my the joint sponsor had already filled out just the regular affidavit of support. Yeah. Okay. And after leaving the interview, they asked for the sponsor to file a I-864 A form. Yeah. Um, so my question would be is if the joint sponsor has enough income for that my friend to qualify to bring her husband why would they need a i-864a form from the joint sponsor do they all live together yes the joint so so originally when nbc said that this case was documentarily qualified the petitioner's family member filed a, a straight i-864 not an i-864a is that what you're saying yeah so when um when they originally did the whole sponsor process um my friend was the sponsor she didn't make enough money so she had a, a joint sponsor um they're not related just like a family friend and um the family friend fills out well the joint sponsor filled out just the regular affidavit of support i-864 form not the a form just the regular one yeah and uh nbc looked over the documents said you're good to said go they were yeah that they, they were good to go Yep. So, so then why are they asking for an A? Because the A is for household members, I think. That's what I'm asking. So my joint sponsor, well, well, my friend's joint sponsor is just you know, him and his wife. So that's why it's is. So did he file it? Oh, so you're saying he filed it on his own without an I-64 A from his household member, and you said that should have been okay because the co-sponsor made enough on their own without the spouse right yeah yeah and so so, his, so you're his you're household right members the household member ahead. doesn't even work yeah no the, the household member has some sort of income from like a rental property yeah but it's like is planning on selling that in the near future here um and they don't want their assets to be available you get what i mean well here's what i'll say because, you know, I think you might know, Joanne, that my wife is from Egypt and most of my clients are from Arab and Muslim countries. So this is some straight up carp bullshit just designed to slow down your husband from getting here. So that's Man. number one. Man. No, that's the truth. And that's I'm, number and I'm, and I'm right there with you. That's number one. Right. So now yeah. just give them what they want. Do, it, will the will the spouse of the co-sponsor, are they willing to do it? No, she wants to know. Why do they need it? Why is it something that they need? If, so her, seen, if the co-sponsor is already making enough to, you know. Um. So, yeah. See, Rocio and Tony figured it out faster than me. So, and that's because I hate I-864s and I hate I-864As more. And I don't do them. That's why. Thank you, friends. Uh, so, um, the reason that they do it is in theory, I mean, one, I told you the real reason they do it. The legal reason they say they do it is because when you're married, your assets are commingled jointly. And so yeah. if they're really, if they're really going to hold the joint sponsor responsible, the joint sponsor responsible for your friend's husband, then yeah. they've got to get the, they've got to get the wife on the hook too. Okay. So but, it's like basically making sure that the wife is on board as well as yeah. the husband. So I would say either find, either get her to do it or you got to find a different co-sponsor. This sucks. This is all bullshit. It's all <laughs> supposed to be done. It's all supposed to be done before you get to the, the interview. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and then let me ask you another question since we're speaking on that. Let's say, God forbid, she doesn't want to do the, yeah. you know, yep. the form. Mm -hmm. How long does the process take for you to change your co-sponsor? Well, typically, I mean, in theory, not even want to tell you in theory what could happen. In theory, they could send it back to NBC to adjudicate. Good the God. Movie, but I don't think they'll do that. I, I don't think they'll do that. 
I think they'll just do it themselves, but I think you're talking a month or two. And then have you ever done a DS5535? Because that's probably coming next. No, what what in the what it's is a, that? There's another BS form where they ask for all of his social media accounts, all of his uh, 15 years of any email addresses he's had, all that stuff. It's but crazy. see, I've already when okay, when we filed the when we did his civil documents, they ask for the the if he has any social media already on the DS two sixty form. Right. Um and I had already included all of his social media, you know, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, emails, whatever. So do you really think that they would have me fill out that form again? Maybe. I hope not. Just get that co-sponsor. Get that lady to sign up. Come on, tell her. Come on, sister. I'm this close to getting him here. And, uh, and close family friend. Known them since I was born. Like our, our hypothetical, family. our hypothetical friend, of course. Yeah, very, very close family friend. Very Come close. Come on, sister. Come on, set us up. Yeah, she, uh, and and she just wants to know why they're why they need it. So I mean, I mean you can play you can you can play the tape for her and show her what I said. And that's what I just did. I I screen yeah. recorded on my phone so yeah. that I can I can send it to her and and let her see what what you're saying. But hopefully she gets on board. I I really yeah, here. I'll just say I'll it, say Jim. one other thing. I'll just say one other thing for her. I've been an immigration lawyer since 2007. I've never heard. I've never read a reported case. I've never heard of a lawsuit from the State Department or from the U.S. government to try to get that money from a joint sponsor or a co-sponsor. Just just so you know, I'm not saying it's never happened. I'm just saying I've never heard of it. Okay. Well, right? I really do appreciate it, Jim. Thank you so much. Bye, Juwan. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Good luck. Keep us posted. You, thank you so much. See ya. All right. Everybody figured it out faster than me. That's why we do this damn show. That's why I have the comments, because sometimes I miss stuff. Hello, Yensmith at yahoo.com. Hi, Jim. How are you? Great. How are you doing? Good. Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, so my husband got an RFE for uh, God knows what. We haven't received the letter yet. And so I'm just wondering what happens after that, because this has gone Speedy Gonzalez real quick. Uh, which is Andale, Andale. Uh, Correct. What, so what, what kind of case? The RFE. And does that what? mean that no interview? What kind of case? A uh, petition, uh, U.S. citizen son over 21 to my husband. And, okay. <laughs> and um, we talked about this before, right? Yes. Um, A couple of days did, ago. Did you submit the medical with the, with the case originally? Yeah, just in, in December the 29th, they re, uh, we sent it. The 28th. 20th, you filed the case or 20th, you sent the medical? No, we sent everything with the medical, absolutely everything, because I didn't want them to request for that or anything. I didn't want them to delay it. So we, the oh. of twenty twenty three, we sent, uh, you know, I one thirty, I seven six five, and I four eighty five. That's good. So that, that's pretty fast. I would bet the RFE is probably about proving up the relationship between the twenty one year old and the non citizen. If I had to guess. I'm sorry. What? Can you repeat that? So you're telling me that this is a case in which a U.S. citizen who's over the age of 21 filed for his father as an immediate relative. Stepdad, yeah. Stepdad, okay. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine if, if you got an RFE that quickly and you submitted the medical, I would imagine that it's either an affidavit of a support issue or they want more evidence of the relationship between the stepson and the person that's being sponsored. Okay. And let's say we send that evidence. Let's say oh. they're okay with that. that oh, yeah, probably not, probably, probably not an interview. I'm going to an interview in New York next week for a parent case, but I should I haven't been on a parent case interview in a long time. Okay, so, so I think those no are pretty interview. rare. Yeah. And then how long after the RFE, after they receive the evidence, how long do you think it would take? Nobody knows. No, yeah, it could be months. It could be a week. Quickly. Probably months. Okay. All right, perfect. Well, at least that's good news. It's we can't news. complain. <laughs> oh, can't complain. All right. Thank you See so ya. much. I really appreciate it. Okay, have a good day. You got you it. Too. Okay, bye. This is the Immigration Answers Show. 
My name is Jim Hacking. I know lots of stuff about immigration, but I apparently don't know about joint sponsors. How about that? I got to learn a little about joint sponsors. That goddamn I-864A, I hate that form. Um, but luckily we have our friends to keep me honest. Hannah is here and she's been waiting. Hello, Hannah. Yeah, I'll get you off camera, but you're on mute. I can't hear you. Sorry. Thank no you. Worries. How you doing? Good. How are you? Great. What's up? So I'm just going to go straight to the question. That that's I, what everybody's doing today. Keep it up. Go yeah, for it. Go so, that's, the so if you Got need, it. you know, if you want to ask any question, I, I, I will answer the best that I, I know how. That sounds um, good. So my friend applied for, um, put application in for, uh, let me take a note here, uh, for I-601 and I-485 all together a 45 um, and a 601 together yeah so like four form that she she submit i-765 i-131 i-601 and i-485 who told uh, her to file a 601 um i think her attorney wow. because she, um she um this is her husband sponsor her and I mm -hmm. think how she came to the United States, it's um, so she had to go through certain court to reopen her case. They've been married for like 10 years. Uh -huh. um, so that's why it's sick of one kind of like related to whatever, that, how did she came to the US? Okay. So, um, so she looked up on the processing time in the, um, the website. And yeah. you see that, you know, the 601, it take uh, much longer than 485. Right. So right. how is the processing time works? Two years at least for the 601. They're getting sued right now in a big class action because they're taking too damn long on those. But they're also, Joe Biden, friend of immigrants, is actually fighting that lawsuit. So um, you're talking at least two years before anything happens on this. Oh, so they have to do, they have to process the 601 before they process anything else? The, the 485 cannot be approved. Apparently, if she needs a 601, then the 485 can't be approved unless the unless and until the 601 is approved. Oh, and what about her employment authorization? Um, the seven, six, oh, um, so prior to that, she have, um, she have, I-765, and she uh -huh. have approved for employment authorization for from the immigration court? something years. From the immigration court? From from immigration court. But then seeing the, the case open two years, uh, a years ago. Yeah. And then she got... Um, it terminated? Uh, terminated, yes. Dismissed, whatever it is. And then, you know, so that's how she able to move forward with these all these forms. Um, yeah. But then her employment authorization going to be expired. In Did she file a 601 or 601A? 601. It's so uh, just, the just waiver. So, yeah, just so you know, I, I don't know that you can file a 601 at the same time as the 45. Um, that's news to me. Okay. Um, I just don't know. So what impact that has on the work card, I think probably the work card may get moving may not i just don't know even though she she have her employment authorization prior to this yeah based that was, on, uh, like that was based condition. on being in deportation and now she's not in deportation anymore so i don't yes. know what's gonna happen that, that, that'd be a good question for her to ask the lawyer that told her to file the 601 with the 45. they might know something i don't know oh okay and because uh, you know, ask um, you know, she asked the attorney. That's what she said. That's that's how you're supposed to do. And I've never he, heard of that. I'm not saying I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying I've never done that or heard of that. My understanding okay. is yeah. My understanding is you have to either be deemed inadmissible or they have to ask you with an RFE for the 601. Maybe I don't know. Thanks, Hannah. Okay. Uh, um. What about her uh, employment organization? The old one expired in a couple months. Right. But the new one is 
I, yeah, I don't know what's I don't know what's gonna happen. That either. I don't okay. know. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank okay, you bye -bye. for your time. Thanks. You got it. See ya. All right, that was Hannah. All right, looks like Aqueous Spaces has finally parked. Yes, my apologies. Um, it's all right. Oh, hold on a second. We have a visitor. Hello. Oh, <laughs> Come on in. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Hello. How you doing? Hi, everyone. Uh, where's, my, my, where's the camera? Here, here, oh, Aqueous Spaces, I'll be right back. He's right there. He's there. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, everyone. How is everybody? All right, I'm I'm done in mm, 20 minutes. Okay, no problem. I'll be upstairs. All right, bye. Later. Sorry. All right. No hear. worries. What's up, boss? Usually when I see you, you're getting you're you're at work. Yes. Um, I've been believe me, I've been getting really busy. I my car broke down. I had just had to get a new car. That's why that's where I'm coming from right now. Um. Oh, like you just got it. Yes. Um. All right. What's know, wrong? Well, I don't know if you've heard anything about Ecuador in the past since Sunday. Um. Mm -mm. They just uh on Monday they officially declared uh Ben um uh, the president Nabohu Naboa declared a state of internal conflict uh armed like martial conflict. law pretty much yes it's Yikes. it's um the I don't want to get into too many details but it's okay. really, really bad right now the um, things are bad in Ecuador really bad um yeah. most, uh okay beyond the point um. Yes, I just want to get straight to the point. My, I'm leaving out to. Uh, I had to cancel my flight, reschedule it because all the commercial institutions were shut down, and all of that. Um, I apologize. I'm just. Uh, it's okay, buddy. Take your time. We're in no hurry. It's just you and me. Um. So you had okay. to cancel your. You had to reschedule your flight or cancel your flight. I I I, I basically canceled it, and then I ended up. Um, deciding to go on a, a, a faith and I, I scheduled a new flight with a different provider and so i'm still going down there that's not that's not going to stop me um are you are you guys already married or, or what the marriage will uh happen when i go down there uh this in, trip uh, yes okay okay yeah, next trip okay all right so straight to the point um one of my concerns is uh last month uh, going for, for work. I went into another country, however, or in another state, um, I got involved in some, um, some legal issues and I'm concerned about how it may influence the, the legal process on how I would be, um, bringing her down here or up here. Um, mm -hmm. I, yes. Um, it's basically, a, a okay. So in the state of Minnesota, marijuana was legalized. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm legally allowed to carry it with me. I ended up carrying it with me across the state border to where it's illegal. So mm -hmm. now that other state is uh, filing charges against me. Yeah, I, I, bet have a, I bet they do it all the time. Yep. Right. So um, I got a really good lawyer. You know, I hope for the best right now. I'm just I'm curious about like um, how that kind of situation would influence um, the process on how I'm being the main provider on bringing her down up here probably not at all not at all okay um, one question is do you there's no warrants out you're free to leave the country that's okay yes i have a of a, a court ordered furlough for my leave of absence okay um, good yeah yes uh, so the question is if someone were arrested and or convicted for a marijuana charge which i would think would be a u.s citizen which i would think would be a misdemeanor or a or a even a um, municipal charge they're they're trying to charge me uh, they're trying to charge me with six different counts right now um one of them is a, a a felony but my attorney seems pretty confident that he's gonna get the felony dropped yeah um so this must be one of the this is one of the dakotas yes yeah south dakota yeah ridiculous um, okay so no no so if even if you get convicted of something like that um, yeah. as long as you're, as long as you're gainfully employed and not in jail, uh, I don't think it'll impact. Okay. All right. That was, that was a, a good question that I had. I figured other people yep. would like to hear that. Yep. Um, second of all, when it comes to, uh, something that I was considering, when it comes to the whole, uh, medical evaluate evaluation for my fiance, um, I'm curious about what kinds of things would be deemed acceptable and what not. Cause I'm sure like if she had a common cold, that wouldn't be an issue. 
Oh yeah. No, it's like tuberculosis or um, hepatitis. Um, they'll do, they'll test her blood for drugs. Right. So that, and then um, I think sexually transmitted diseases, just those, I think that's about it. I mean, you can look, look at the, look, pull up the form. It's called an I-693. It should be on there. Okay. That's not the form that the, that's not the form that the doctors abroad use, but you can, I mean, one, you might be able to look on the Ecuador U S embassy website in Ecuador to see if there's a copy of the form or what's tested, but that's something you should be able to figure out. But I think that's the big stuff. Okay. 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 Um, all right. That's all. I just wanted to clarify my uh, whole right. question about the yep. drug charges and, you know, the charges and whatnot, because that happened. I was going to do my, uh, start talking with the other people in your company about going through a payment system, but I yeah. was, I wasn't sure about that. So now that I'm clarified, I'll be getting on that. Um, okay. okay. That's all. Thank well, you. And be careful going. Okay. Yes. It's, uh, the most dangerous person escape prison and a lot of, a lot of really. Yeah. Um, I'll be good. See you, bud. You. Stay safe. All right. All right. You know, in a way, sometimes we get these stories. Like I was just picturing the day when he and his wife come back on the show and it's sort of neat to see the whole trans transition. Our friend, Matt, um, everybody, we were, Andrew and I were talking about what a nice guy Matt is yesterday. Uh, Andrew was here for a couple of days. Listen, I got interviews the next two weeks. I got to do, let's see, I'm doing a naturalization interview on Friday. And then I'm doing, a, like I said, a parent-based green card in Manhattan. Um, the last time I went to Manhattan for an immigration interview, I was walking down 8th Avenue. And this van, it was early in the morning, this van pulled over and came way over. And these two guys jumped out of the car and they started running towards me. I was like, holy shit, I'm going to get arrested or kidnapped or something. And they go, YouTube guy, YouTube guy. They were going crazy because they recognized me from YouTube um, right around the corner from our hotel. So that was fun. Um, but I'll just be up there. It'll be a quick and back to New York. I'm going to try to catch a play if anybody has any suggestions. Um, all right. USA is here. Hello, USA. Hi, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. You remember yesterday, the, a cutter, you know? What about yesterday? Uh, I came on the interview too, but like I was looking for the receipt number and uh, it cut it. Oh, okay. Go ahead. So, so like I told you yesterday, I filed like a marriage based green card with my wife and yep. then, and then I submitted everything on the, uh, on the 10th of February, 2023. Okay. And I have not received my work card like since then. And I went to do my uh, my uh, bio biometric appointment on the 13th of March, and that's it. And I haven't heard anything from them. And so then my, after, my, my first question is always: Were you out of status at the time that you applied for your green card? No, like uh, I I did the change. I was having pending status at the time. Uh, so well, let's back up. When did you come to the United States? I came to the states on 19 June 2021. Oh, that's my anniversary, June nineteenth, twenty twenty one, and then you got six months. I got three months. J one. Three months. Oh, J one. Okay, and so were you subject to Rule two twelve e, or were you not subject to Rule two twelve? No, I wasn't. Okay, and so you got three months. So that's September nineteenth. So what happened before September nineteenth? So before September, like before my visa ends. I did submit a change of status to become a student. To F1. Exactly. You know, I hate those, right? Uh, I don't know. Did they ever, did they ever adjudicate it? No, it, they took forever to like, to, to do something, you know. Uh, okay. I, rem, I remember. You, you applied, you applied in September of 21. And then when did you get married? I got married like uh, in uh uh, in uh, November, 16 November, 2022. So, so a year after you're, you were supposed to leave. I mean, I wasn't supposed to, I was supposed to leave, but I did things legally. Right. So, stay. so, so we're cutting hairs here, but what I'm saying is you, you, you had applied for a change of status, but in a certain sense, 
you were past when you were supposed to leave. So maybe I should be more clear when I say that. So I think this is why your work card's taking a long time because I think there's this whole approach that they have on cases like this. Somebody's out of status for a long time. They have a reason to get married. They got married to clear up their immigration history. We're gonna go slow on their work card to put pressure on the marriage. We're gonna go slow on the green card to put pressure on the marriage. We think it's 50-50 that if we really drag this shit out that they'll get divorced and we won't ever have to give this guy a green card. And uh, like uh, also I told you, Mr. Jim, yesterday, I uh, I have uh, contacted the contact center and they told me like over uh, over workload things, you know. Oh, that's all bullshit. You, you just heard people, somebody said earlier, they got their work card in 60 days, so... So what is what's my approach here? I do have a lawyer as well, but I like my lawyer is not too active, you know. You're just chilling. That's it. You're just chilling. I mean, you're you're almost at a year. Yeah, it's outside of processing time. What field office? If you had an interview, what field office would it be? Indiana, Indianapolis. And how are things with you and your spouse? Amazing. And they they know everything. I mean, I don't know. I mean, they know everything about the case. They know what they're doing. They know that you're applying for this benefit and all that stuff. Yeah, they know. Um, I would say that if you hit March 1st, give me a call if you want to sue them. We can get that thing moving. March 1st. Yeah, when you're after, after a year. Uh, how much does it cost to sue them? Um, it cost, Right now, our fees are going up next week, I think. Right now, it costs $4,800 plus the $405 filing fee. Um, am I in a bad spot? No, I don't think you're in a bad spot. If the marriage is cool and you got a halfway decent immigration lawyer, it should be okay. You got good evidence. You're still yes. making evidence. I mean, uh, we do have evidence that we submitted, but like we constantly, like you know, try to document what we do. You don't sound very confident in your evidence. No, I mean. I mean, we live together. We do have all the evidence, but I'm saying... I mean, like when it... I mean, you understand that on the fraud checklist that we got from USCIS on a couple of our cases, the one that they used, the number one thing on the top of the list is was the beneficiary out of status. And I, I would argue that pretty much you were. Okay. So, um, so that's number one on the fraud list. So that means you have to submit extra evidence. You have to prove your case even better. So if you're... If you feel like your your evidence isn't so great, you need to make things a lot better, and you got to ask your lawyer, "Hey, dude, or do that. What are we going to do to make this thing better?" I get it, uh, Mr. Jim. I have another question. So, when I contact this contact center, are they like in the future can use these things against me, or like whatever I say? Oh, that's a good question. So. If I keep calling USCIS, that's a great question. If I keep calling USCIS, bothering them about my slow ass case, are they going to say at my interview, hey, dude, why were you in such a hurry? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, um, I, I, I kept calling them about my work permit. Um, no, I don't think I don't think the two things ever get connected. I don't get it either. Yeah, I think you're just chilling. Let us know if you need help, okay? All right, I will. Thank you, man. Bye, buddy. All right, so it, lo it looks like our good friend Pineapple Lemon was born on the same day that Imani and I got married. And just so everybody knows, Pineapple Lemon was nine years old when we got married. Nine years old. We got married on Lemon's nine-month birthday. Abdi Rahman is here. What's up, Abdi Rahman? Yes, sir. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How are you? MashaAllah. Uh, I, I was. I think I was the last person yesterday, <laughs> and then okay. got disconnected. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you remember what we were talking about yesterday? I'm sorry, my brother. I live in the moment, and I forget most shit. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I am. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's up? Yeah, my questions was uh, and is still is uh, my. My wife uh, have interview on for I one thirty in mm -hmm. Addis Ababa Embassy, U.S. Mm -hmm. Embassy in Addis Ababa, and uh, I have a four months old baby. 
Yeah. Uh, baby boy. Yeah. Which is not which is not in the case. Yeah, I remember we were talking. To you, you weren't understanding what I was trying to say. Yeah. What I was trying to say is your kid is either a U.S. citizen or he isn't, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So either either you're right that he is mm -hmm. or those fools who said you need to file an I-130 for him are right. I don't know who's right because I don't have your timeline. I don't have your documents. I, I'm not handling your case. But mm -hmm. only one of you is right because mm -hmm. if 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 he's not a U.S. citizen, then you do have to file an I-130 and it's going to take a really long time, like a year and a half, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what what makes him citizen, and what is? Well, I don't have my little book here, but usually it's if you've lived in the United States for five years before he was born, at least mm -hmm. two of which were after you turned fourteen. Say that again. You got break up. How long? Hey, let's do it like this. How long have you lived in the United States? Since twenty fourteen. And what year was he born? He was born. Uh, August the 30th, last year, 2023. So I think you're right. I think he's a citizen. And I think mm -hmm. that they, I think that the, whoever told you to file an I-130 is wrong. And and I and I think what I said yesterday was, your wife's interview is coming up, right? Yes. So I would say, I would have her ready to advocate for your son. Say, look, please, please, please give me my visa. I got to get the hell out of Ethiopia. It's not safe. And oh, by the way, mm -hmm. while you're, while you're finishing up my visa, can you go talk to the people in the CRBA section and say, hey, this lady is ready to go. I'm going to give her her visa. And now um, and now will you go ahead and finish the passport so they can go both go to America? That's what I would do. Mm. So uh, I, I, she, I will bring to the application for CRB and uh, yeah. And, yeah. pass, and passport application together. And yeah. she's and ready would, by when she's at the interview. Yeah, and I would also send her proof that you lived here for more than five years. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do, do you and Kat, is it is it good idea to go with her to, for the interview? I don't think they'll let you. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, now, you, could, you could show up there to inquire on the CRBA, but I don't think anyone's going to let you in. Oh, okay. But if they, will, will they ask you her me to come to the to the embassy if they want to finish the CRBA? I don't think so. Oh, okay. I think nine okay. times out of ten, or ninety nine times out of a hundred, that's without any interviews or anything or any involvement of the U.S. citizen parent. Yeah, I uploaded everything on the system. Yeah. Uh, what What about what about uh, my income uh, evaluation? Do Do they need uh, the current status of my income? Do you know? Um, no, this is a good reason why not to go to the interview. No, usually, I mean, you you might if you've been watching the whole show, you heard that lady, the Kurdish lady with the friend whose husband got dinged for that. But that's very unusual. I would say one time out of a hundred do they do they revisit the affidavit of support. So I think you're good. Oh, okay, okay. But it, like, if you have proof of current employment, current pay stubs, that's all good stuff to send with your wife. I uploaded my my last uh, transcript from IRS recently. Okay, great. All right, I'm going to get going, bud. Thank you very much. Thanks, Abdul Rahman. See you, buddy. All right. Well, everyone was wondering what play to see. Nurse Laura said Book of Mormon. Book of Mormon's coming to St. Louis next month, so I'm going to see that. I think I might go see a Stephen Sondheim. There's a couple there, and he's one of my favorites. Uh, I will be checking out now. We'll be doing a show tomorrow. We're not going to have many shows next week, so if you want to get on, you better come this week. I think next week we might just do one or two shows. Tomorrow... We'll do a show at 4 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Central tomorrow show. And then Friday, I don't know if I'm doing a show on Friday. I'll try, but I'm traveling, so we don't know. Maybe I'll do one quick and dirty from the airport. Hope you all have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central. Thanks, everybody.